The first thing you want to do on your Galaxy Watch 5 Pro or regular Watch 5 is adjust your orientation settings. To do that, either swipe down and tap the settings icon or swipe up to go to your applications and tap the settings application. Now scroll down until you get to general and scroll down about halfway until you get to orientation. This will allow you to fully customize the orientation of the watch on your wrist. So instead of just selecting whether you want it on your left or right wrist, you can also change the key position. So that means if you'd prefer to have these keys on the left side of your wrist, just tap left and it'll flip everything over. So now I can switch my watch around and have the keys on the left side and all of the text is in the correct orientation. Once you've set your preferred orientation, the next thing you want to do is download and install Google Assistant because by default, all you get is Bixby. To do that, just go to your apps again, open up the Google Play Store, tap the search icon, tap in the search box, and type in Google Assistant. Then tap search, and you'll see Google Assistant right at the top, then just install it. Once it's installed, you can open it and go through the setup process. Now, even though I have Google Assistant installed, if I long press the home button, it's still going to bring up Bixby. If you'd rather have that open up Google Assistant, just go back to your settings, then scroll down until you get to advanced features, then scroll down again until you see customize keys and tap that then change the press and hold shortcut from Bixby to Google Assistant. Now when I hold the home button, it'll open up Google Assistant instead. Jumping back into this menu brings up another thing you should do when you first get your device, and that's set up the shortcuts. So we've already changed the press and hold shortcut, but you can also change your double press shortcut as well. Right now, double pressing is going to open up your most recent application. Right now, that's the Google Play Store, and if I press it again, it's gonna take me back into the settings. If I tap the double press option, I get the option to keep it as opening the most recent application. I can open up accessibility shortcuts, or I can open up any application I have installed on my watch. So if you want, you could set the double press shortcut to Bixby, and you'll have access to both Bixby and Google Assistant with this one button right here. Now, right now, you may be thinking, why on earth would someone want Bixby as a shortcut? But as I demonstrated in a previous video, Bixby is incredibly powerful when used in the right way. Oftentimes, people confuse Bixby and Google Assistant and assume they're meant to do the same things, but the truth of the matter is that they're not. Google Assistant is great for things like getting information, setting up reminders and calendar appointments, and things of that sort, but Bixby excels in watch-specific functions, and it allows you to do things that Google Assistant is not capable of doing. For example, if I wanted to start a specific workout, all I'd have to do is activate the Bixby Assistant and say, start push-ups. And just like that, it would start the push-ups workout. Now let's say I've been doing push-ups for a little bit, and now I want to switch to doing pull-ups. All I have to do is reactivate the assistant and say, start pull-ups. And what this is doing is adding the pull-ups to the exercise routine. So this is different than just starting and stopping different routines. Because if I were to back out here and tap finish, you'd see that I did two workouts. And as I scroll down, you'll see the pull-ups and the push-ups and this will be logged together as a single exercise. If I didn't use this method, these would be logged separately. Bixby can also do things like start a heart rate or stress level measurement, start a breathing exercise, and so much more for things that are specific to your Galaxy Watch. And if you guys wanna see a bunch of other powerful Bixby features, go ahead and check out the video that's linked at the end of this video or in the description below. Jumping back into the customized keys options, if you scroll back down a bit, you'll see that there's one more shortcut that you can adjust, and that's the back key. Right now, pressing the back button just takes you back one screen, but you can also go back a screen by swiping in from the left. So that's kind of redundant to have two back methods. Instead, you can tap the short press option and switch it to showing your recent applications. Now, when I press the back button, it's going to show all of my recent applications. And if I wanna close one of those applications, I can just swipe up to close it, or I can scroll all the way to the end and tap the X to close all of my applications. The next thing you want to do is check to see which applications on your phone can be installed on your watch. To do that, swipe up to show all of your applications and go to the Play Store. Then at the top, you should see an option called Apps on your phone. Go ahead and tap that. And this will show you all the apps on your phone that can be installed on your Galaxy Watch. Since I use YouTube Music often, I'm going to go ahead and install that now and show you guys another thing you should do with any music applications when you first get your watch. Now that YouTube Music's installed, I'm going to go ahead and open it. And once the app loads, I'll be able to scroll down and see a bunch of preset playlists. But if I scroll further down, I'll be able to see my personal playlists. Then I can select one of those playlists and download it directly to the watch. 
and this will allow me to directly connect my wireless earbuds to my watch and listen to music without bringing my phone with me. This is excellent for people who like to go running or biking without bringing their phone with them, or for people like me who like to leave my phone inside when I'm working on the lawn. And pretty much every music application on the watch should have this download feature. So that includes YouTube Music, Spotify, and more. Speaking of applications, there's one more application that you absolutely must install if you have any smart devices in your home. And that application is called SmartThings. So let's go back into the Play Store, search for SmartThings, tap the app, and install it. And the reason you need to install this application is because it allows you to control all of your SmartThings devices right from your wrist. And it works so well and so quickly. If you simply open the application, you'll get quick access to all of your scenes and devices, which is pretty nice, but this gets even more powerful when we look at your tiles. So let's go back to the home screen and swipe across to take a look at all the tiles. If you swipe all the way to the end, you'll be able to add tiles, and since Smart Switch has been downloaded, you'll now get the option to add SmartThings tiles. The first one is called Device Control, and this is for a single device that has multiple controls available for it. So if you have a Samsung TV, this will allow you to power off or on your TV. You can quickly mute it. You can increase or decrease the volume and change the channel right from your watch. The next option is called Multi-Control, and it lets you control multiple devices from a single tile. So here, I've set up a tile to toggle these different devices on and off. So if I tap these two here, it'll turn on the studio lights that I have. So you can see it got a bit brighter in here. And if I tap them again, it'll turn those lights off. The same is true for the lights in the kids' playroom and even an air conditioner. If I tap this, it'll turn the air conditioner on. And if I tap it again, it'll turn the air conditioner back off. And the last smart things tile is called Scenes. And this allows you to run any one of your scenes. So once I set the tile, I can tap Add, select a location, and select my Studio Lights On scene and a Studio Lights Off scene. I'll tap OK. And now if I tap this Studio Lights On scene, it'll turn both Studio Lights On simultaneously. And if I tap Studio Lights Off, it'll turn them both off simultaneously. So as you can see, this is an incredibly powerful application, and you'll definitely want to install this if you have SmartThings devices. While we're talking about the tiles, the next thing you should do is customize your tiles so that they're in an orientation that makes the most sense for you. To do that, just long press one of the tiles. Now you can long press the tile again and drag it over to wherever you'd like it to be. Certain tiles also have an edit option beneath them, and if you tap that, you can customize the individual tile. So this is a workout tile, and if I tap this plus icon, I can select any other workout to add. And if I tap this little minus here, I can remove a workout. Once you're done making adjustments, just swipe in from the left, and that'll back you out of the editing mode. If you want to completely remove a tile, just tap this minus icon right here. And when you're done editing the tiles, just tap one of them to exit the editing options. Since mobile payments are being accepted in more and more places, you might as well set up a mobile payment method. There's two options with the Galaxy Watch 5 and Watch 5 Pro. The first is to use Samsung Pay, and to enable that, just hold the back button for a few seconds, and that'll open up Samsung Pay, and you can go through the setup process here. The second option is to use Google Wallet. This previously used to be called Google Pay, but it's now all been merged into a single application. To use Google Wallet, you'll first need to install it. So swipe up to reveal your applications, go to the Google Play Store, tap the search icon, and search for Google Wallet. It should be the top option, so go ahead and select it and install it. Once it's installed, just open the application and tap to add a card. Then it'll tell you to continue on your phone or you can finish setting it up. Now, unfortunately, if you prefer Google Wallet over Samsung Pay, there's no way to change the back button shortcut to open up anything other than Samsung Pay. Fortunately, there are two workarounds for this. The first is to swipe up to go to all of your applications, swipe down to find Google Wallet, then long press it and drag it up. So you can drop it somewhere on the top. So that's always a quick swipe and tap away. The second thing you could do is go back into your settings, then go to advanced features again, and back into the customize keys option, and you could change the double press shortcut option to open up Google Wallet instead. So now if I want Google Wallet, I can just double press the home button, and if I want Samsung Pay, I can just long press the back button. One of the biggest reasons people love smartwatches is because it allows them to really track their health. That's why it's important to set up your health profile and tracking methods when you first get your watch. To do that, swipe up to show off your applications and open up the Samsung Health application. Now scroll all the way to the bottom and tap Settings. Here, you can choose to measure your heart either continuously, every 10 minutes, or manually only. And you can even set high and low heart rate alerts. So if you have a heart condition where this may be a problem for you, you can set alerts at specific heart rates. 
and the maximum high heart rate alert is at 150, and the minimum heart rate alert is at 40. Backing out of here, you can also choose to measure your stress continuously or manually only. Further down, you can measure your blood oxygen while you're sleeping. This does use a bit more battery, but if you're concerned about having something like sleep apnea, this may be worth testing out. And you can actually turn on snore detection, which will actually use your phone's microphone to listen for snoring when you're sleeping with the watch on and you have your phone near you, maybe on a nightstand. And you can even set this up to take recordings of your snoring so you can hear it later. I recommend maybe turning this on for a week to see if you do snore. Then after that, you can turn it off to save some battery life. Further down, you also get the option to auto detect different activities. And what this will do is automatically start a workout on your watch if these different activities are detected. And that includes walking and running, using an elliptical trainer, a rowing machine, when you're swimming, doing a dynamic workout. So this one pops up if your watch is detecting a higher heart rate and a lot of movement, but it can't figure out exactly what you're doing. It'll just show up as dynamic. So if you were doing something like circuit training, it would probably show up as a dynamic workout. And you could also have it alert you if it starts tracking the workout, or you can have it just do it in the background. And down here, it says that the detection starts after several minutes of activity. So if you go run somewhere, but you're only running for about a minute, it's not going to start a workout. But if you're running for about five minutes, it'll start that workout automatically. And lastly, you can set up an active time. And what this does is if it's between this time on these days down here, if you're inactive for more than 50 minutes, you'll get an alert on your watch telling you to get up and move. So this is great if you have a desk job and you want to make sure you're not just sitting all day long. If you back out of these settings, you'll see another option at the bottom here called manage items. And what this does is allow you to customize the order that these appear in. So if I tap manage items on the watch, it'll bring up all the items on my phone and I can long press them and rearrange them however I'd like. So as you can see, I've moved daily activity to the top, then exercise, then steps. I'm going to go ahead and tap save. Then if I back out of that application and go back into it, you'll see that it's now changed to daily activity, exercise, and steps, just like I set it up here. Fortunately, Samsung now ships the Galaxy Watch 5 and 5 Pro with a swipe style keyboard, so you don't need to download one separately anymore. However, adding punctuation requires swiping up from the bottom, tapping this symbols icon, tapping a period, then swiping up again, tapping the letters, and continuing your message. That's quite a hassle, but there is a quick fix for this. If you swipe up again and tap the settings gear instead, this will take you into the settings for the keyboard. And if you swipe down a little bit, you'll see an option called double tap spacebar to add a period. If you enable this, then you'll be able to just double tap the spacebar to add a period. And if you want even faster messaging, you want to set up this next feature. First, you'll need to go to your settings, then scroll down until you get to general and enter that menu. Then scroll down until you get to input, go into that menu and scroll down further until you see quick responses. Go ahead and tap this. And the first thing you wanna do is make sure message suggestions is enabled, and I'll show you that in a minute. But further down, you wanna to go to this custom responses option and tap that. This is gonna open up a menu on your phone, so let's jump over to my phone and take a look at that. So here's the menu that pops up on my phone, and as you can see, there are a ton of quick responses. And at the bottom, you get to add your own quick response, and this can be up to 30 characters long. So if there's short responses that you would typically use often when responding from your watch, you'll be able to add those here. So I've just added some of my own custom ones. And if I wanted to edit these, I could tap the edit icon right here and I can rearrange them however I'd like. And if you want to delete some that you never use, you can go ahead and select those and tap delete. To use the quick replies, scroll down below the reply message option in your messages application. And you'll see all of them here in the order you set them up in. The message suggestions option that you guys saw a minute ago is a contextual suggestion. So what that means is that you may or may not get suggestions based on the content of the message you received. For example, here's a message I received asking if I want pizza or hamburgers for dinner on Friday. If I scroll down a bit, you'll see that I get these new options called either is fine or whatever you want. So depending on the context of the message you received, you'll get different responses above your personalized quick responses. So between these quick responses and Samsung's new swipe style keyboard, it'll legitimately be faster to reply to some messages using your watch instead of taking your phone out of your pocket. The next thing you should do is customize your quick toggles that you can get to by swiping down from the top of the screen. There are a ton of quick toggles here, allowing you to do a lot of functions really quickly on your watch. Since there are so many different toggles, you wanna set your favorite toggles to your first page so they're easily accessible. To do this, all you have to do is swipe to the end and tap this plus icon. This will allow you to add any toggles that aren't currently shown. You could also remove toggles that you don't use very often. And you could long press your most frequently used toggles 
and drag them to different pages so you have faster access to them. Once you're done rearranging your quick toggles, just press the home button and all of those changes will be saved. By default, you only receive a few different notifications on your watch. To enable notifications for more applications, you'll have to open up the Galaxy wearable application on your phone. We're gonna go ahead and just jump into the Galaxy wearable application. And this application should have been installed automatically when you connected your watch to your phone. From here, we're gonna jump to watch settings, then notifications. In this first panel, you'll see all of your recent notifications. And if you tap more, you can see more of your recent notifications. This is a quick way to see if you're missing any frequent notifications on your watch. So you can see right here that I'm not getting any notifications from Gmail. So I'm gonna go ahead and enable this so I don't miss any emails. However, you should only turn on notifications for applications that you actually wanna get notifications for on your watch. If you turn on notifications for everything, your watch is gonna be getting notifications all the time and it'll start to reduce your battery life. If you tap this little arrow up here, you can sort to see just your most recent notifications, your most frequent notifications, just the notifications allowed on the watch, just the notifications blocked on the watch, or all of your applications. While we're in the Galaxy wearable application, there's one more thing that you should enable, and it's called Find My Watch. When you tap this the first time, it's going to take you through a setup process, but once that setup process is complete, you'll be able to see the last known location of your watch, navigate to that location, or make your watch ring. And further down, you get two more options. The first one is to notify you if you accidentally leave your watch behind. And the second option is to share the device's location with other people in your family. If you wanna see why Bixby is amazing on the Galaxy Watch, tap the video on the left. If you wanna see the top unknown Galaxy Watch 5 features, tap the subscribe button and turn on notifications because that's coming up soon. That's it for this tech episode. God bless guys and I'll catch you in the next one.